one week into training camp and we're already seeing some injury issues at tight end. Question is, what are we going to do about it? Guys, before we break down the tight end position and what is going on currently with the Buffalo Bills at tight end, I want to remind everyone that between now and August 6th, which is the last day of training camp, you want to go to www.bewarethestampede.com to enter to win this Andre Reid mini helmet, guys. Plenty of ways to enter. You got Twitter, you got here on YouTube, you got his email mailing list on BewareTheStampede.com, and you can tweet every single day to get a new entry every day. So go to BewareTheStampede.com and find out how you can enter to win this Andre Reed signed mini helmet. Welcome to Believers Talk. My name is Joe. Welcome to a training camp edition of Believers Talk where we take a deep dive into training camp guys we are done with one week of training camp and the injuries are piling up at the tight end position now the good news here is two things first of all the tight end position uh you know we don't have any of our studs there right we're not gonna get josh allen injured we're not getting john brown or cole beasley or something like that injured having great training camp by the way but these guys are still important to the blocking schemes when it comes to running the ball and protection for Josh Allen in throwing the ball. We knew about Tyler Croft coming into training camp. We knew with the broken foot, he would still be out somewhere between two to four months. But as training camp has gone on, we've also lost Jason Kroom, and we also lost third-round draft pick Dawson Knox. Now, Jason Kroom, back in OTAs, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but Jason Kroom actually started having hamstring issues back in OTAs, but that was about a month ago. And to see those continue to linger can't be a great sign, right? You have to be worried about that because Jason Kroom at the beginning of training camp was going to be our starting tight end. So to see that he is struggling with the uh, with the with the cramping or the I'm sorry the hamstring injury uh, that that has to be concerning for the Buffalo Bills. And then at the end of Saturday's practice, towards the end, day three. Dawson Knox also goes down with a hamstring injury. Now, again, the good news here is their hamstring injuries give them time to heal and they'll be okay. The bad news is, however, for training camp on Sunday, we had some one tight end, zero tight end sets. And I'm not sure how often we want to do that during the regular season. So we want to make sure these guys stay healthy. But in the meantime, is there something the Bills can do to make sure we have those two tight ends set formations now again maybe these these hamstring uh hamstring pulls maybe they're not that serious and we think that maybe jason croom maybe dawson knox will be back for week two but you really don't want to rush these things right hamstring injuries as we're seeing with jason croom can linger and really to me the important date to remember is august 16th our second preseason game against the panthers now you know we have that first preseason game i believe that's gonna be on the 8th or 9th i forget exact date but that first preseason game, you know, the starters start play, what, a drive or two anyway. You're not going to see much time for the starters. But then that second game, you might play a whole quarter. And then, of course, that third game is that dress rehearsal game where you play at least a half, if not longer. And you really want to get your feet wet before that game if you plan on being a starter. We saw Dawson Knox playing really well in training camp. We saw Jason Kroom again going to be the starter at the start of training camp. But obviously due to these injuries, uh, that's just not happening. So what do the Buffalo Bills do here? Do the Bills seek after tight ends on the free agency market? This late, obviously in the offseason, the free agent names don't wow you, but can you look at someone with the body type of one of the guys that got injured? Right now, the Buffalo Bills have four, uh, I'm sorry, three possible tight ends that they can use. They have Nate Becker, seventh round draft pick Tommy Sweeney, and third year guy T Keith Howbridge. Those are the three tight ends that the Buffalo Bills are using in training camp, at least the three that they used yesterday. Um, so we really want to take a look and say, hey, is there something the Buffalo Bills can do this week? You know, you have two days off to get that tight end position better, to give uh, Josh Allen and the whole offense and the whole defense a better feel about what the offense is going to look like. Because, guys, that's something else we have to remember. Not only do we want to make sure our offense is flowing 
uh, you know, at, you know, as best we can. We also want to give the defense different looks that they might see throughout the season from all the other teams that they are going to face this season. So is it fair to both sides of the ball to stay weak at tight end position for a couple weeks and then also to to not uh, run your, your tight ends out there in different formations? So we looked at some of the free agents. I looked at some of the free agents that are coming out or, uh, at the tight end position that are still available. And again, the cupboards are bare, right? We're talking about July 29th. This isn't exactly the time you normally go out and get free agents, but is that something we want to look into? Guys, let me know in the comment section if you think the Buffalo Bills should go after a free agent tight end, or if they're okay with uh, with the tight ends they have now, just wait till your tight ends get healthy. Before I get into that free agency list, guys, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, what you doing? Hit that subscribe button because there is plenty going on in 2019. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, leave a comment. Do you think... The Buffalo Bills should sign a free agent tight end or two while uh, while they recover from the hamstring injury. Both Kroom and Knox recover from their hamstring injury. Or do you say, you know what, let's not muddy the waters. Let's just wait and see what happens. But, and again, when you look at that, you could also say, well, what if it, it's worse, right? What if these hamstring injuries last a few weeks? Do you then want to go into free agency and then realize, hey, you missed two or three weeks that you could have been, that this player, whoever you're getting free agency, could have been with this team. Uh, you, you really want to weigh the pros and cons. I'm sure Coach McDermott, I'm sure Brandon Bean, I'm sure they're doing that right now. We definitely have the cap room to go get one of these guys. It's just a matter of if we really want to. So I went down the free agency list, and the first name that comes up is actually a really common name and someone that if if... if this player wasn't where he is today. I would definitely say, yes, let's go get him. And that is Austin Severin Jenkins. Now, some of you may remember that name. He used to play for the New York, New Jersey Jets. Uh, you'll remember two years ago, caught a, caught a, uh, what seemed like a touchdown pass against New England. I think it was McCourty or someone hit the ball while it was in his hands. While he still had possession, the ball fumbled around a little bit in his hands. He fell out of bounds. They ruled it a fumble out of bounds and ruled it New England ball. No idea how that happened. However, that was the ruling on the field. And then the Jets ended up losing that game by less than a touchdown. So uh, you might remember him for that play. But a decent tight end here. Now, last year he was with Jacksonville. So you do have to wonder if his stats declined because of his decline or because of the offense. They were in Blake Bortles obviously getting a lot of... Um, negative publicity for how he did as the quarterback in Jacksonville. But you look at his career stats. So first of all, Austin Sparon Jenkins, uh, originally from the University of Washington. Uh, he signed with the Pats in April, okay? And this is what I talked about when I said you want if he wasn't where he is today. Uh, he signed with the Pats in April. And then in May, he came out and talked about how he was having issues with alcoholism, right? How he was, he wanted to get help for that. So in June, the Patriots released him. And now, you know, he's still in recovery, still in uh, whatever rehab that he's get, gotten himself into. So, you know, would he be prepared to come back in for two months after two months off? Probably not, because if that were the case, the Patriots probably would have kept him on the roster. Um, so it's good to see him come out and admit that he had a problem. It's good to see him uh, admit himself in to rehab hopefully he is doing better but it doesn't look at this time that Austin Safarian Jenkins is actually available even though he is listed as a free agent uh, but we do hope he gets better and then at some point hopefully in the future he can become an NFL tight end again maybe for our Buffalo Bills we'll see what happens but he was a second round draft pick by Tampa Bay in 2014 and in 13 games in 2017 with the Jets he had 50 receptions 357 yards and three touchdowns again. She had that fourth one, uh, but it was ruled that it was a fumble. In 2018, like I said, his numbers did decline. He only had 11 catches for 96 yards and one touchdown. But again, you wonder if that's due to the Blake Bortles effect, if you will. So going down this list, again, doesn't look like he is an option, but he would be the best option available if he was an option. But going down this list, second on my list was A.J. Derby. Sixth round draft pick by the New England Patriots in 2015. Went to the University of Arkansas. Playing three seasons. 25 games has been a start for four of those games. In those four games, uh, or in those 25 games, 40 receptions. 
350 or 452 yards and three touchdowns so some production there he has started a few games in the nfl and again for all we know this guy is just going to be a filler just collecting paychecks during training camp just so we have guys to fill that full roster to get our tight ends in there and see what happens until uh jason croom and uh dawson knox come back from those hamstring injuries and then it's just as easy as releasing them if we if we want but it could open up more. Because as I get to this third guy, I've always really liked this guy. Veteran player could come in and fill that role and also surprise some people. Maybe we make that 53-man roster. I'm talking about Jermaine Gresham, right? Ex-Cincinnati Bengal, ex-Arizona Cardinal, Jermaine Gresham. Jermaine Gresham was a 2010 first-round draft pick, 21st overall by the Cincinnati Bengals, went to Oklahoma. He was a Sooner, and then he's a two-time Pro Bowler in his career, 377 receptions, 3,752 yards, 29 touchdowns. Again, this guy is a two-time pro bowler. He knows how to get the job done. Maybe we bring him in. Maybe he fights then for that starting job. You know, Tyler Croft on the bench, probably through the uh, regular season. We need to get that starter. If it's Jason Kroom, great. If it's Dawson Knox, great. But if neither of them can be ready for that third, second or third preseason game, do you really want to have them go out there at the start of the regular season, even though they haven't gotten their reps with Josh Allen as someone else can potentially have? Now, Jermaine Gresham holding down the fort for a couple games while Dawson Knox, Jason Kroom, or someone gets those reps, and then you have a good one-two combo. And this is a good veteran who can come in there and at least teach these young guys what it takes to be a tight end in the NFL. We got a lot of young tight ends on this team. I mean, Tyler Croft was going to be pretty much the only veteran. I mean, Lee Smith is there as well, but he's not, you know, he's not like some savvy vet. He's only been in the league three, four years. So you look at a guy like Jermaine Gresham, you know he's not going to cost all that much. This is a guy I really like. This is a guy I would circle and say, maybe this is the time to pick up a veteran tight end, even if he's just there for the duration of camp and use his wisdom you know we also what happened with josh allen when he had Derek anderson there that type of improvement we could see that the tight end position so let me know what you think in the comment section below about jermaine gresham coming to the buffalo bills and then i look at the next player on this list neil sterling seventh round draft pick in 2015 he's playing 35 career games has 24 receptions 239 yards he was just released by the chiefs on july 24th right so just became available now why did the chiefs release him well because they're pretty stacked at the tight end position they have one of the best tight ends in the game over there and travis kelsey not sure why they would need that third or fourth tight end uh on that roster and maybe they realize that maybe they have other roster depth issues they wanted to focus on those so we get neil sterling possibly off the waiver off free agency now that he has become available and then the fifth guy on this list is marquise gray now if some of you might remember that name because marquise gray used to be a buffalo bill back in 2015 uh 2014 2015 he was a Buffalo Bill. He was a 2013 undrafted free agent, went to Minnesota, and in his career has 27 receptions for 328 yards. Mostly has been a special teams player, was a special teams player for the Bills when we had him, was a special teams player for the Dolphins most recently last season. So those are the top five tied end free agents that I see that are available to us if we wanted to go that route. But again, let me know what you guys think. Should we go undrafted free, or should we go to the free agency market, pick up a tight end? Or should we hold on and say, whoa, you know, it's only 91 guy roster. We don't want to release anybody yet, you know, because in order to get one of these guys, we'd have to release somebody else. Let's hold off. Let's see how serious these hamstring injuries are. Because let's be honest, guys, the Buffalo Bills front office, the Buffalo Bills staff, they already know how serious these hamstring injuries are, right? They know, uh, you know, if, if Dawson Knox is going to be out for a while or if Jason Kroom, this might be a lingering thing or if this is just a week-long thing, then they can decide. But if this is going to hit preseason, do we look elsewhere uh, for our tight end? Again, let me know in the comment section what you think about the tight end position, the current state of the tight end position. It's hit us hard, uh, but again, it's not as bad as some other teams. You look at the Giants with what they had to do with with Coleman and Sterling. You look at A.J. Green, unfortunately for him, what happened there. He's going to be out for the start of the regular season. Um, so it could be worse, but it could be better. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, guys, we keep you updated on all Buffalo Bills news. Going to recap these three and four of free agency in um, a future video, and then we'll get you ready 
for week two of training camp, preseason, and then the regular season when we do all live play by play and reaction videos, premium and hashtag sports. So I look forward to that. I'll talk to you all soon. Until I do, go Bills.